The gold mines in Kasanda and Mubende district sprawl across an abandoned rain. Before they were evicted, locals dug the bowels of the earth to look for specks of gold. The community, especially women, did odd jobs to eke a living in the mines. The area had been flooded by foreigners, posing a security threat. The Police Mineral Protections Unit was deployed in these areas to halt illegal mining. It has since emerged that the force turned the barrel of the gun to subdue the civilian population engaged in gold mining. In contrast of their role, the police unit deployed to bring sanity in the mines is now part of a powerful racket straddling the tunnels with hammers and chisels in search of the precious stones. The security officers are mining gold more than us. They are using our labor and we are at pain with it. We work for them and they cheat us. When we found gold, it's them who benefit. It's the whip and gun that rule those of us with spades. The locals in this dangerous web have paid a high price. This man was shot in the chest after quarrel ensued in the mines. Though he can barely fend for the family, he's lucky to be alive today. Mm. We failed to agree with the officers, so they said, let us get Bonnie and Sarah, who is the commandant in the area. Bonnie came and said, I promised to shoot you in the head. Mm. Okay. Said, I'm only aching a living. He shot me in the chest and others fled. Mm. Stories of human rights abuses have been recorded across gold mines in Mubende, Kasanda, Weju, and Namayingo. Artisanal and small scale miners continue to bear the brunt of the Mineral Protection Police Unit during the lockdown to control the spread of the COVID 19 pandemic. Under the, the, the cover of lockdown, many things happen. And Ugandans need to ask questions. Those who have evidences are there on what happened, and they should not be intimidated when they talk. Right now, they are in hiding from their communities where they live. This is unacceptable in a democratic Uganda. Fred Sentamu used to earn his livelihood as a border border cyclist in Kasanda. But he was beaten while ferrying the gravel of a police officer from the mines. His head bears the physical wounds, but his emotional scars run even deeper. Sentamu, who looks meek, displayed his medical documents, including the X-ray results. Later on, his family had to sell his motorcycle for three million shillings to be able to cover the bills. The gravel which I was carrying was for a police officer, but they just hit me on the head and I lay unconscious. My children ask, what shall we eat today? The landlord is also demanding his rent. Not even women have been spared of the abuses at the hands of the Mineral Protection Unit. This woman's ship strayed in the neighborhood. What should perhaps have been resolved amicably resulted into her torture. She was detained, handcuffed and beaten. They told me to kneel on the stones and they told another lady officer, Saida, to handcuff me. Saida whipped me one stroke, but Sarah Atamba Mwesigwa got a whip and beat me. Another officer, Dan Namanya, beat me in front of my kids. 
she reveals that she was arrested for a second time and subjected to more humiliation. Her businesses have now collapsed. They stopped the car and they removed the sacks. They destroyed my sacks of three million shillings, which I was selling. Many of the victims have attempted to report these cases at police stations, but they've not been helped. Simon Arivariho lives in the district of Hueju. Though it's endowed with natural resources, including gold, it's a backwater with a poor road infrastructure. He says the Police Minerals Protection Unit raided the mines last year and beat them up. They undressed us and beat us. We are Ugandans. Why would they beat us? Cows are no longer beaten. John Nwabine and Nicholas Tumshave share a similar harrowing experience. We asked them why they were beating us when we were looking for money. Police said, you have no permission to be here. The mandate and command structure of the Police Minerals Protection Unit remains opaque. Parliament in November 2019 briefly arrested the commandant of the protection unit, Jessica K. Gomba, for telling lies to a House committee. She was accused of flouting an oath administered at the beginning of the session. Okay, Gomba, Jessica, swear by the check. Francis Mujuche, who represents Buhweju constituents in Parliament, told NTV that the Police Minerals Protection Unit is a quasi-military outfit that operates above the law. Mujuche says the Protection Unit is now a mining outfit which is seeking to grab the lucrative business from communities. Who is this powerful Keigomba? Where does he derive her powers? How does she think that evict Ugandans in their areas of operation, in their villages, and, and now in addition to ev evictions, she's now involved in mining? Henry Nixon Ogwa, the Director of Programs and Policy at Action Aid International Uganda, says the protection unit is an outfit run by cronies and should be probed. found that these are people who are cronies, they are related. Their command structure is not necessarily based on what is known, but rather in terms of how they are related. We think that it is important that the management of Uganda police and the Ministry of Internal Affairs takes this seriously to review the command structure and the mandate of the Mineral Protection uh, Police Unit needs to be made public and um, uh, all stakeholders aware. He says the gold sector remains informal and unregulated, giving rise to corruption, loss of revenue to government and human rights abuses. So they are not just protecting minerals, they are mining. They are extorting money. If you don't, if you're not willing to give them money, they will chase you away. And the process of chasing you away really is, 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 is um, dehumanizing. The few that have remained mining have been enslaved. They are got because they have the skills in carrying out the mining. And they work for these officers under very terrible conditions. Force that uh, was meant to be protecting uh, the minerals um, has ended up getting involved into mining illegally and of course secretively and uh, because they lack the expertise they have to utilize the, the original owners of those pits and that has come with a lot of torture with a lot of unpaid labor amongst those who have heeded the clarion call against the illegal acts of the protection unit is the state minister for mineral development sarah opendi we are also aware that um, the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development has tried to have 
dialogues and engagement with this unit, but things have not worked out. We are aware that Honorable um, Sarah Opendi, the Minister of State for Mineral Development, actually has been engaging on these issues. So much so that it shouldn't be left as a personal war. That is what it is being looked at. In fact, a minister as she is, I, we think in civil society that she now needs more protection because she has touched on very powerful people. Speaking to NTV, Opendi says she will not be cowed by cartels involved in illegal mining. I, I won't be intimidated. I know some people within the security circles have also gotten involved in mining, but I really want to tell them that what they are doing is actually wrong. You don't go and mine simply because you have the gun, which I don't have. So I'm glad that His Excellency the President has been very clear on that. So we should be able to even move in and get uh, these people out of the mining sector. She revealed that sweeping reforms will be sanctioned and errant officers of the Minerals Protection Unit found illegally mining will be punished. Of course, um, I must say I'm disappointed uh, that, um, well, the Mineral Protection Police, which was supposed to work hand in hand with the sector, and most importantly ensure that there is law and order in the sector, has gotten into the mining. And um, I'm glad um, that His Excellency the President has taken this up. And we hope that very soon there will be some action taken against those officers who have moved away from their cardinal responsibility into the mining sector. The 2019 Mining and Mineral Bill seeks to recognize artisanal and small-scale miners and will provide occupational and safety measures. We know that DGSM is supposed to be regulating, supervising, um, permitting, uh, giving permission to miners to actually access the mines and do the legal mining. But we are seeing cases where police has actually taken over those roles because if they are the ones that are the custodians of the permits, now you enter, someone cannot access. So I think the clarification of mandates is very clear, is, is very key in this case. But then I, I, I also feel that there should be a way compensation. If an investigation is instituted into these cases, into these allegations, government should be in position to at least compensate people, probably uh, take care of the health issues that have emerged out of this. Two, if you have gone to do uh, sensitization, how do you start evicting people? In the process of evictions, you go and mime people, beat them up. You know, you should have seen... Uh, cases of... Um abuse of human rights, I just want to encourage those who have suffered, who have, like the person who was shot, these are cases that should be reported to the police and handled. Or other institutions, we have the Uganda Human Rights Commission, we have the uh, Nakalima, the anti-corruption uh, unit at State House, so people should be, uh, feel free to really go and report but if it's not quickly enacted by parliament and assented to, there are fears that the Police Minerals Protection Unit could take advantage of the vacuum in the law and continue to take on supervisory and regulatory roles that the current Mining Act 2003 vests in the Directorate of Geological Surveys and Mines. Emmanuel Mutaiziwa, NTV.